Hello and welcome to 7 uh, Java training tutorial. In this uh, training program, we will have a look at generics and exception. And these are two most important or very important things which we should learn to be able to work with Selenium. So let's begin with. Let's see the content of today's uh, training session. We will have a look at generics, wherein we will see raw type and generic types. We will see exception, we will see exception hierarchy, types of exceptions, how we can handle the exception, how that is with try catch and finally block, how we can specify the exception and finally we will have a look at exception classes in Selenium WebDriver. So let's begin. Let's see the generics. Okay, so this is our uh, Java tutorial program which we have been using from quite some time and we have added lots of test classes now. So let's see here, I have a new package called generic and exception and now we should know how we can create the package because we have seen it uh, many 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 times and this is a class called ex exception example and generic. So let's have a look at the uh, generic class first. So here we have a main method and then I have declared an array list. We have not seen collection so far which we would have a look at in future but for time being let's assume that we have a class called array list which is from java collection framework and this is this is a class which is a collection of uh, same type of elements so in array list we can store say string or integer or any other type of object uh, we will have a look at uh, array list or other java collection framework in detail in future session so this is an array list here so i have i have instantiated the array list here how do i do that it's done by using name of the array list then I have given it a name here called array list one and new array list and then I have added an integer to it okay now what I'm doing here is uh, I, I would also try to retrieve this element later after I have added this in into the array list so how do I retrieve the element I retrieve the element using the get method so I say array list dot one get zeroth element so uh, you can compare it with the array which we had seen earlier indexing an array begins with zero as well as in array list now i'm assigning it to a string object but when i'm using array list.get then what i'm going to get is an object i will not get a string so i would have to typecast it how do i typecast or convert an object into a string i can just append a string in parentheses in front of it but we know that there is something wrong here because we had added one to array list which is an integer and now we are getting the first element which is at the zeroth position and we are assigning it to a string which is wrong we cannot assign an integer to a string which would result in an error or exception which we would see in a in a short uh, while but let me try to run this program and see what happens so let's run this yeah let's see here we have an exception which is java dot lang class cast exception which says integer cannot be cast to a string in simple words we are assigning uh, two incompatible data types to each other and this is where generics come in generics provide type safety generics provide a sort of constraint or sort of restriction over a collection so that it specifies what kind of elements can go to a collection so in this array list we, we we can put anything we can put a string we can put integer as long as we are not using generics and this may result in error in the program later this is where we use generics so let's see how we can generify our array list so this is the same class here array list and then we use angular brackets here and in middle of angular brackets we have specified a string this means that we are generifying our array list now in this array list we can only add a string and not integer or any other data type object so let's see how we instantiate it we say array list in bracket is a string name of the array list which is array list 2 equal to new array list and then again para parenthesis a string followed by parenthesis and semicolon and then we add argument to this array list so i have added a string here now for example if i try to add integer to this array list then that would not work so let me try to do that so here i add one let's see there is one red line which says java.lang.string cannot be applied to integer which is right because now we have generified our array list so it can only hold a string object let me remove this line okay so 
Following this, if I want to get the object back from the array list, then I would use the same method get here, and then I can assign it to another string. And if you have a look here, in the previous example, I had to cast it in a string. But here, since array list is generified, it means by default it's going to get me the string object. So I do not have to cast it to a string now. All right, so let's run this program again. Let me write a print statement here. Oops. And let me comment this first line, otherwise it will not let our program run. Alright, so if you look here, software testing is printed. This is something which we had added into our array list. So this brings us to an end of generics here. Generics is a vast topic, but I think this introduction is enough for now. So let's move on to the next topic, which is exception. What is exception? Exception is, as we know in real world, is an error, it's, 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 it's a failure and this is something which can happen in a program as well. So when we create a program, we should save our program from any kind of error which may occur. In Java, we have an exception hierarchy which goes as object class, which is the super class for every class. And then we have throwable class from which we have error and exception subclasses which is inheritance, which are inherited from throwable class. And we have seen inheritance in previous sessions. Now error has some other subclasses, exception has some other subclasses, and then we have runtime exception. So let's see type of exceptions. We have mainly two types of exceptions. We have checked exceptions, exceptions which we should either handle with try catch or we should specify. We will look at we will have a look at it in a while. And then we have unchecked exception, which could be our errors or runtime exceptions which we may or may not have to handle. It's, it's a controversial topic, but we will discuss this as well. So runtime exception could be a null pointer exception, which you do not know, and you may not be in position to handle it, or error could be any hardware failure, which you may again not be able to handle. So let's have a look at how we can handle the exception. So there are two ways to, there is one way to handle the exception, which is it try and catch block, and let's see that. So I come to the second class now, which is exception example class. And in this class, I have a couple of methods. So my first method is uh, public, double, divide, and don't handle exception. So this method takes two arguments, integer a and b, and I'm just doing a division here. It means that this method will not check whether b is zero or not. And we know that if we divide a number with zero, we get infinity which is not a valid result. So there's no exception handling in this in this method. Now let's see next method, which is divide and handle exception. Again, we have two arguments here, but we have try catch block here. Let's look, let's have a look at the syntax of try catch block. It begins with try followed by parenthesis, then the operation which we want to do, which is the return statement of the result of a divided by b. Then we have the catch block here where we are catching the exception. So we say here that we may encounter arithmetic exception and we catch it. I'm not doing anything here. I'm just printing it. I'm printing the stack trace of the program. But in real world, we should handle the exception and do something else. So this, this is a very simple example. And then we have finally block. Finally block is always executed whether you know we have exception or not. So I'm just printing here a statement that you know I want to free the system resources. And at last I return zero. For example, if this return could not be carried out because we were doing division division by zero. So this is called handling an exception using the try catch block and then finally freeing up the system resources using the finally block. Finally block is something which is always executed whether you have exception or not. So this is this is handling the exception. You can also specify the exception. How you specify the exception? You can say, you can use throw the statement and then you can write the name of the exception here. So for example, I'm trying to write to a file using the print writer class here. So I say print writer, new file writer, and then name of the file. But if this file is not there, then this method or this statement will throw an error. For example, if I remove throws the statement here, then IDA will complain, yeah, that there is an unhandled exception. And now it gives me an option. I can either handle it or I can add exception to method signature. This is called specifying the exception. So I will, I will select add exception to method signature and it is done.
All right, and then I'm printing a statement. So let's look. Let's have a look at the test class now. So this is a test class, and in this test class, I I am using the methods from the exception example class which we saw earlier. So I have a main method here, and then I'm instantiating the exception example class here, and then I'm calling the divide and don't handle exception method, which is the first method. And here I have division by zero, which would result in an exception. So let me run run this method. Oh, sorry, I executed the previous main method. I have to run this main method. Let me right click on it and say run. Yeah. Now if you see, we have an exception here. It says exception in thread main Java dot line dot arithmetic exception division by zero. And if you see after this except exception, program is terminated. that is none of the other statements are executed because we are not handling any exception here and the program just gets up okay let me try to comment it now so that we don't have error here and then control comes to the second statement or second method call which is divide and handle exception and here we have our try catch block so let's see what happens when i run the program again all right so we have division by zero error which is coming from here and if i click on it it comes from here and then we are printing the stack trace so it is printed here but the point to be noted here is even though we have an exception the control continues to execute the program so the control comes to the system dot out dot print ln statement and then we have three system resources and this is something which is printed here not just this control also goes further so what happens further further down the program we have another instance of write to file and we are in we are writing to the file now here write to file program throws an exception so we have two options again we can either surround it with try catch or we can specify the exception so in this call of write to file i am using the try catch block so i am handling the exception there is exception coming out of this program as well because this method as well because i do not have any such file called out file.txt and then we have a catch block and finally i am calling the write to file method wherein i have not handle except handle exception here and then if i do not handle the exception then i will have to specify it and this is where i had to add the throw statement here so if i remove the throw statement here then this line throws an error yeah unhandle exception and then i can say add exception to method signature yeah okay so looks like that this method is really not throwing an exception it works even if i do not have the file i assume that the file is created this is the reason why we are seeing the successfully return to file statement being printed here so this is how we can either handle the exception or if we cannot handle the exception then we can specify the exception okay let's go back to our content okay so we saw handling the exception and specifying the exception yeah let's have a look at exception classes in selenium web driver all right so i have selenium java api here uh and i will come down and open the package org open qa dot selenium and in this package i have exception classes yeah so we have couple of exceptions in selenium which are like element not visible exception that is if you try to interact with an element which is not in the dom for example sending uh, uh which is not which is not visible in the dom for example writing in to a text box which is disabled then web driver will throw this error and this error is legitimate because even real users cannot enter text into the text box which is not enabled so if i click on this error uh click on this exception class we can see its hierarchy so it comes from something called web driver it 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 inherits from web driver dot exception class and then we have runtime exception class exception class variable and object so this is the hierarchy which we had seen earlier but if you notice here it is from runtime exception class so you may still have to handle this in your programs if this is a valid use case so whether to handle the runtime exception 
or not it, it depends on how what you want to do with the exception if you want to continue with the program execution and if this is an accept, expected error then you would as well handle it and in your test report you would show that this is an expected failure then we can also see a couple of other exception classes mm, let me go back to the main page Let me go back to org open QA Selenium. Let me come down to exceptions. Yeah, we have a couple of other exceptions. For example, invalid uh, selector exception. If you if you do not specify a right locator, then you have this exception or no such element exception. For example, if you want to uh, test whether an element is present or not then this error would be thrown if element is present but in that case you would not like your program to be terminated you would like an error to be reported in your test report so you can handle this exception and you can print an error message in your log file or if this element or if an element is present when it should not be there then you can mark your test result as failure so these are the couple of examples of exception classes in selenium yeah so i think we have covered all so this brings us to an end of this session i hope you would find this uh, tutorial as well as the video helpful and if you like it then please give the thumbs up thank you bye bye have fun and good luck with learning